Hey everyone, welcome back to NetTouch Plus. My name is Jeffrey Way, and in today's video quick tip, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the box sizing CSS property as well as the box model. So let's dive in and kind of get an idea of what the box model is. So I've created a div with an ID of box and just written hello world within it. Okay, pretty easy. So let's set a box and a background of red, a width of 200 pixels, and the same for the height. Okay, I'm trialing this uh, program called Xscope. It's pretty nice. You should check it out if you're interested. Uh, you click on it and it lets us know, okay, it's 200 by 200 as it should be. So next, let's set a border of 20 pixels solid black. Okay, and now if I hover over it, you'll see that the total width is 240 pixels. So according to the box model, the borders are added to the width of the element. So here it would be 200 plus 20 pixels on the left, plus 20 pixels on the right, equals 240. Okay, so now let's add another section of padding on the inside of 10 pixels, and it's going to further increase by 20 pixels total, so now it's 260 pixels. So, Internet Explorer actually uh, originally got this wrong, and what they did is they assumed that the width is the maximum width it can be, and any padding and borders, not the margins, thankfully, but any padding and borders will be factored into that size. So it would, it, it would reduce the content size accordingly, uh, never exceeding a width of 200 pixels. So sometimes I wonder if maybe they got this right because we work so much in floated layouts, you've probably uh, experienced these issues where even adding like a one pixel border uh, breaks your layout. It's, it's really hard. So sometimes Internet Explorer makes it much easier on us. Uh, I'm not advocating it because truthfully I'm right on the fence on whether it's a good idea or not. With that said, uh, Mozilla and WebKit actually offer a way to simulate the, the box model. So it's called box sizing, used to alter the default CSS box model. So the default value is content box, that's the standard, CSS standard. But then they also offer a border box where it factors the padding and boarding into the width and the height. And this is how Internet Explorer did it. So let's try that out now, and we'll set box sizing, and I better add the prefix moz to border box, and you're gonna see this immediately decrease. So if I go back, now the width is back to 200 pixels. That's really helpful, I think. And you also have the version of doing a WebKit box sizing as well as just box sizing. So uh, in, in touchy layouts, I don't, I'm not sure it's a bad idea to take advantage of this. Though, like I said, I'm, I'm still kind of experimenting with it. So let's go to another example with uh, the 960 framework. So don't worry if you're not familiar with this framework, it's just simply a grid framework. Uh, you don't need to worry about it. So I've set a container 12 and I've set each section essentially to 33% of the width. Grid 4, 4, 4 equals 12. And this is what we get. So now let's go and style those sections and get each of them a background. Okay, fine. So what now if I decide, you know what, I'd like a, a border to the right of each one of these, okay? Well, as you might guess, this is going to completely break our layout. As you can see, because floats are so sensitive, even the addition of a single pixel, uh, once it cr makes the content area too wide, it has to break down onto its own line. So with floated layouts, this really becomes a, a pain in the butt. So in these cases, if you want, and I'm not advocating it, but consider it, is you can do moz box sizing and change to the Internet Explorer version. And now that will factor, whoops, moz. That will factor that into the width. And you can do the same thing as well where you ever notice when you want to apply padding, uh, it, it stretches out. So the only option is to maybe apply the padding to the children of the element or something like that. In this case, you can do it as much as you want, and that factors into that overall width. And I sometimes think this is far more helpful, but I would love to hear what you think, so let me know. And as always, visit NetTouch Plus for more tips and tutorials. Thanks, guys. Bye.